Hi, in today's episode I'm building this new beefy side plate for my CNC router and I'd like to show you how I did it. So in making this plate there were a couple of challenges I had to overcome. The first one is how to hold it because I need access to the entire outside perimeter and I chose the tape and super glue method. I'm going to show you that in a second. And the second problem is that the plate is rather thick so we need to have good or correct cutting parameters and also good chip evacuation. Also there are several holes here that are 8 millimeter or 8.3 millimeter to be precise and I don't like to mill them I would like to drill them out using a drill bit and 8 millimeters on the CNC router I haven't done that before I've made 4, 5 and 6 I wonder if we can develop enough torque at that lower RPM that's required. Let's find out. To machine the plate, I will fasten it down with painter's tape and super glue. And one of the things you have to be aware of is that you have to have enough surface area. Well, what I found out that if I use the entire plate and tape it down, I have a really big problem getting the plate back up. And um, so what I did is I made two plates from plastic right here and these are sacrificial so I drill into them or machine into them and I'm going to clean them, put the tape on here, put the tape in the reference area here as well and then glue everything down. Now I'll show you how I do that next. Okay both sides are taped up going to Apply the super glue now. Okay, there's accelerator on this side and an alignment as you can see there. So let's see if we can get that on here now. There it is. That's it. In the first operation, I will need to spot drill the holes. And I'm going to use a YG1 center drill. This is a number four, one eighth of an inch. And I'm going to install that and we start the first op. There's going to be a pocket up here where this bearing block is going to sit for the ball screw and it's going to be fastened with some M5 screws and therefore we need to machine a hole with a diameter of 4.2 millimeters to cut the M5. This is unfortunately a regular length drill bit. It's not ideal but I think we can make it work. Okay, success, nothing broke off. Now, when you hear the shatter from a drill bit, it is usually because the feed rate is too low. And I was afraid to increase the feed rate, that was a plunge rate of 70 millimeter per minute, um, because it is a regular size bit and only four millimeter in diameter. So increasing it, I was afraid that I would break it off. And then second is that you saw the bit was retracting every single time back up over the material and that is so that I can get the mist lubricant uh, to do its job basically otherwise I'm afraid that there will be some chip weld and the bit breaks off. Okay in the next operation I'm going to drill the 6.3 millimeter holes for the M6 and this is a screw length bit that will be good. This is also a YG1. The 8 millimeter holes 
that I need for the M8 to go through, I'm gonna pre-drill them with this as well. Wow, that was quite a bit of vibration and also a little bit of struggle for the spindle itself. Now the next one is not going to be any better. This is an 8.3 millimeter YG1. Also screw length, drill a bit and will open up um, I think in total 8 or 12 holes I think. Okay, here goes nothing. And there goes the battery of the camera. Well, as you can see, the drill is still there, but I really cannot recommend that process. I think that if you go maybe 10 millimeters deep or so, or 15 at the max, and then continue to drill through by hand or on the drill press, that would be a better practice. But there was quite some shattering going on and vibration. The magic number for my machine seems to be about 80 millimeters per minute um, plunge down and that has the minimum amount of vibration and produces the best swarf or the best chip. So next on is the pocket. Let's do that. To clear out the pocket, I'm going to use a Datron 8mm single flute bit. What I like about this one is the 4-in-1. For a single flute, normally it comes to a pointy, sharp pointy edge up in an angle, and this one is flat, so that leaves usually a better surface finish at the bottom, at the floor of your pocket. And other than that, I like the quarter inch better or the six millimeter. I had to use eight millimeter because I need the depths of the flute. Left to do now is the final perimeter cut and I will do that in two passes. So can't beat that one flute. It's an excellent surface finish right here. Nothing to complain about. Okay, the plate is finished. I think it came out great. There are no significant dimensions or significant characteristics on this plate, but the pocket is 60 by 60 and I just measured that and it's dead on. So I really like that, that um, I know that my machine is also that precise. You can see the other plate right here. It already has the bearing block installed. 
and I was busy in between. This is the z-axis already completely assembled. If you like to see how I did that, um, there's a video about that as well. Okay, I hope I catch you next time. Take care. Bye.